James Quincy is the president of Coca-Cola Europe. What good does Coca-Cola do you physically? Uh, I think Coca-Cola, uh, as, as the introduction said, does have some sugar in it. It, it is energy. Is it an absolute necessity? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, millions of people uh, enjoy it as part of their, their, their diet ac across the UK. Does have some sugar in it, you say? It does. Why don't you say specifically how much sugar there is in this can, for example? Uh, I think if you find, if you, you put, turn... Yeah, if you, on the side, you see 30, you have a percentage on there, don't you? Yes, r right here on the front, uh, it quite clearly calls out the amount of uh, sugar yeah. in this can of Coke. And what 35, does it say? Gra 35 grams, which is, right. which is six uh, teaspoons of sugar, uh, which is, you know, about the same amount of calories as a cappuccino or half a croissant. Uh, so there is calories. Is and it? actually, uh, what we're doing is to say, look... The information is here. We want to actually promote right. and make sure. Do you people imagine do people know, know if they go to the cinema and they get this is a small one and there are big ones here too? You go to the cinema and you get a, can, uh, a jug of Coke like this. Do you think people have any idea how much sugar's in it? Uh, and maybe they don't. And and and, and I think one of the well, things do you we know need what to it do. Is? Look, look, look at this. Twenty-three sachets of sugar in that single container, the equivalent thereof. Uh, now, that is a staggering amount of sugar, isn't it? Th that is why we're very focused as one of the things we're doing on getting the information out there. We we're not trying to hide the information behind what's in uh, a, a Coca-Cola classic. To hide it. But there's zero sugar in a Coke Zero. Uh, uh, well, clearly, it's called a Coke Zero. But a, a Coke classic, look at this one here. There's 44 packets of sugar in this one. 44! Indeed there are, and, and I think what we're saying is, look, we want to make sure that people have the information available them, to them so that they can make the choices, and if they don't want uh, the big one, then fine, and that clearly is not one that's going to be for everyone. No. We want to make sure the information is available. We want to make sure there's more availability of more choices, whether it's sure. smaller packages, as you but had whether, in your intro. Yeah, but whether it's 23 in something this size... Mm -hmm or 44 in something this size, each of which is to be consumed in one single sitting of the cinema, this is staggering, isn't it? We have an awful, awful reality right now. America, you're at the top of your game. This is one of the most unhealthy countries in the world. Can I please just see a raise of hands for... How many of you had, have children in this room today? Please put your hands up. Aunties, uncles, you can continue to put your hands up. Aunties and uncles as well? Most of you. Okay. We, the adults of the last four generations, have blessed our children with the destiny of a shorter lifespan than their own parents. Your child will live a life ten years younger than you because of the landscape of food that we've built around them. Two-thirds of this room today in America are statistically overweight or obese. You lot, you're all right, but we'll get you eventually, don't worry. <laughs> right? The statistics of bad health are clear, very clear. We spend our lives being paranoid about death, murder, homicide, you name it, it's on the front page of every paper, CNN. Look at homicide at the bottom, for God's sake. <laughs> right? Every single one of those ones in the red is a diet-related disease. Any doctor, any specialist will tell you that. Fact. Diet-related disease is the biggest killer in the United States right now, here today. This is a global problem. It's a catastrophe. It's sweeping the world. England is right behind you, as usual. <laughs> I know they were close, but not that close. <laughs> uh, we need a revolution. Mexico, Australia, Germany, India, China, all have massive problems with obesity and bad health. Uh, I, I want to talk about something so basic as milk. Every kid has the right to milk at school. Your kids will be having milk at school, breakfast and lunch. Right? They'll be having two bottles, okay? Uh, and, and most kids do. But milk ain't good enough anymore because someone at the milk board, right, and don't get me wrong, I support milk, but someone at the milk board probably paid a lot of money for some geezer to work out that if you put loads of flavourings and colourings and sugar in milk, right, more kids will drink it. Yeah. And obviously, you know, now that's going to catch on, the apple board is going to work out that if they make toffee apples, they'll eat more apples as well. Do you know what I mean? Um, 
for me, there ain't no need to flavour the milk, okay? There's sugar in everything. I know the ins and outs of those ingredients. It's in everything. Even the milk hasn't escaped the kind of modern day problems. There's our milk, there's our carton. In that is nearly as much sugar as one of your favourite cans of fizzy pop, and they're having two a day. So, let me just show you. We've got one kid here having, you know, eight tablespoons of sugar a day, you know. There's your week. There's your month. And I've took the liberty of putting in just the five years of elementary school sugar just from milk. Now, I don't know about you guys, but judging the circumstances, right, any judge in the whole world would look at the statistics and the evidence and they would find any government of old guilty of child abuse. That's my belief. Now, the problem with the system that relies on processed food is that when you process food, when you freeze it and dehydrate it, you destroy most of its flavor. And one of the most mind-blowing things for me as I was doing this research was coming upon a flavor industry that has arisen to manufacture the taste, not just of most of the fast food that we eat, but most of the processed food that you'll buy at supermarkets today. Now, one of the chapters in my book set out to discover why McDonald's french fries taste so good. And they really do. I mean, they have a very distinctive flavor that's different from just about all the other fries that the chains sell. And the reason is this one ingredient at the back of the list, the very end of the list of ingredients, you'll see this phrase, natural flavor. And um, it is a natural flavor. I, I had to really try and figure out where it comes from. And uh, it turns out it comes from animal products and uh, from beef. Uh, there's all kinds of strange things that are being added to our fast food uh, that most people don't realize. Chicken McNuggets derive much of their flavor from beef and from beef extracts. Um, but one of the real problems that we're facing today is obesity among children and the way the fast food chains are marketing these same high fat foods to children. And to me, that's a very, very different subject entirely. The obesity rate among American children has doubled since the late 1970s. And we have the highest obesity rate among children in the Western industrialized world. There are children now who are suffering uh, from early onset diabetes in large numbers. Um, there are children who are six to eight years old who are having heart attacks because of their obesity. Um, the fast food chains from the very early days have worked hard to market their goods to kids. Ray Kroc, again, really pioneered this. And it wasn't because he loved kids. It was because he realized, and he's quite open in his memoir about this, that if you can get a child to come to your restaurant, you'll also get one, two of their parents, grandparents. And the industry's own surveys now show that whenever a child gets, sets foot in a fast food restaurant, the average check size is much higher just because that child is bringing in other customers. Hello, my name is Burke Bear, and I'm 11 years old. I came here today to talk about what's wrong with our food system. First of all, I would like to say that I'm really amazed at how easily kids are led to believe all the marketing and advertising on TV, at public schools, and pretty much everywhere else you look. It seems to me like corporations are always trying to get kids, like me, to get their parents to buy stuff that really isn't good for us or the planet. Little kids especially are attracted by colorful packaging and plastic toys. I must admit, I used to be one of them. I also used to think that all of our food came from these happy little farms where pigs rolled in mud and cows grazed on grass all day. What I discovered was this is not true. I began to look into the stuff. 
on the internet, in books, and in documentary films, in my travels with my family. I discovered the dark side of the industrialized food system. First, there's genetically engineered seeds and organisms. That is when a seed is manipulated in a laboratory to do something not intended by nature, like taking the DNA of a fish and putting it into the DNA of a tomato. Yuck. Don't get me wrong. I like fish and tomatoes, but this is just creepy. The seeds, the seeds are then planted, then grown. The food they produce have been proven to cause cancer and other problems in lab animals. And people have been eating food produced this way since the 1990s, and most folks don't even know they exist. Did you know rats that genetically engineered corn had developed signs of liver and kidney toxicity? These include kidney inflammation and lesions and decreased kidney weight. Yet almost all the corn we eat has been altered genetically in some way. And let me tell you, corn is in everything. And don't even get me started on the confined animal feeding operations called CAFOs. <laughs> Conventional farmers use chemical fertilizers made from, made from fossil fuels that they mix with the dirt to make plants grow. They do this because they've stripped the soil from all nutrients from growing the same crop over and over again. Next, more harmful chemicals are sprayed on fruits and vegetables, like pesticides and herbicides, to kill weeds and bugs. When it rains, these chemicals seep into the ground or run off into our waterways, poisoning our water too. Then they irradiate our food, trying to make it last longer, so it can travel thousands of miles from where it's grown to the supermarkets. So I ask myself, how can I change? How can I change these things? This is what I found out. I discovered that there's a movement for a better way. Now, a while back, I wanted to be an NFL football player. I decided that I'd rather be an organic farmer instead. That way... Thank you. And that way, I can have a greater impact on the world. I learned about this guy named Joel Salton. They call him a lunatic farmer because he grows against the system. Since I'm homeschooled, I want to go hear him speak one day. This man, this lunatic farmer, doesn't use any pesticides, herbicides, or genetically modified seeds. And so for that, he's called crazy by the system. I want you to know that we can all make a difference by making different choices, by buying our food directly from local farmers or neighbors who we know in real life. I'll, some people say organic or local food is more expensive, but is it really? With all these things I've been learning about the food system, it seems to me that we can either pay the farmer or we can pay the hospital. I know. Food, junk food now, they know, they have proven. Junk food is addictive, and the more junk food you eat, the less inclined you are to eat healthy food. Any restaurant that you recognize the name, don't eat there. And I'm sorry for the people that have the McDonald's uh, wakala in this country. I'm against fast food. Muslims have their own fast food, you know, like falafel and shawarma. We have our own fast foods. And you have the fast foods in, in, in Malay. Eat your own foods. Eat healthy food. Don't eat this junk food. This food is made in factories by chemists to get you addicted. They use rats and they see how much sugar and fat they need to put in. Just like tobacco, it, it, people get addicted to it. They, they can't stop. So avoid any of these restaurants. Look at these poor children. It's, it's a crime against our children to feed them this junk. Allah always says with halal, tayyib, always. Now we know the meaning of that, because at the time of the Prophet, it, the food was pure. They interpreted it to be economic to not buy it with haram money. But now we understand another dimension of it. And you, uh, zaman yufassir al-Qur'an, like Ibn Umar said, time is what interprets the Qur'an.